guys, I want to show you here how to scrape the web so you have a good example on which you can build your own program. So the first thing is that you want to import requests and you want to import um, from beautiful soup and it's called beautiful soup 4. You have to install that first uh, from BS4 import uh, beautiful soup and I'll import it as BS to just be able to shorten that a bit. Then I don't need to write it out as beautiful soup dot whatever every time. So if I do this um, I need to think which website am I actually going to use and I have one website here that uh, tells me about Jena. Jena is a city in Germany and in Germany in Jena there was a situation a few weeks ago, they were saying that uh, they had actually introduced masks first and apparently they had not had any increase in uh, COVID-19 infected people. So I was just curious to see whether that still holds true. So what I'm doing here is the following. If you go to the website, you can actually click on different elements once you've enabled the developer. Um, tools and here I'm clicking on this and it shows me here this inspect part. If I click on this it takes me here and it shows me the HTML code of this website. So if you look at this it tells me uh, the exact text that it shows there and above that is this class here. If I go to edit attribute uh, then I can actually copy and paste the name of this class here. Okay, this is a different kind of class. Yes, yeah, good kill. Uh, that's a different kind of class than the one that you are familiar with from Python. Uh, it's an HTML class, so be aware of that. Therefore, there's a slightly different approach to this. For the time being, I'm just going to copy the name of this class here. I'm also going to put down the URL. Um, so I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to paste it here as a string, so inverted commas or quotation marks if you prefer, and that's it. So now I want to actually download this website. Basically what I'm going to do is download this website and then I'm going to extract this number here. Actually I'm interested in the date as well and the time when this information was published. And then I'm going to store all that in a CSV file and I'm going to run this regularly so that it does it all the time. Okay, so uh, we'll do the following. Uh, I'm going to say here using um, requests. You, I've uh, done this whole thing before. Uh, then I'm going to use these uh, two statements here. I'm going to say okay page, I'll call it page, uh, just any variable, requests, dot, and then get. Now, I didn't call my URL capital letters, but I use small letters, so I need to adjust that here. And this page dot raise for status is just in case the website was down or something, you actually get an error message. So, um, that's the first thing. Now, I could actually print that page but uh, it would give me a lot, of, uh, a long uh, message here. Actually, uh, I'm not going to do that. Uh, let's just move on. The next thing would be to create another object, a beautiful soup object. And I'm going to do BS beautiful soup of the page that I had and not just the page, but actually the text. And then uh, what Beautiful Soup asks me to do is provide a parser, a method how I'm going to parse this website that I've downloaded here. And so I'm going to use the html.parser. There are others, but this will work fine for you. Okay, so the next thing that you wanna do is uh, then find the information on there that you want. And that is what I'm going to do here. 
So I have here, I'm going to call it words. In this soup object, I want to find, there's a find method and call it class underscore to distinguish it from what a class normally is in Python, class underscore equals. And this is what I'd copied earlier, what I have down here. Okay, so instead of putting it back in there, I'm just going to delete this now because I have that. And so I'm going to remove this here for the time being. And I'm also going to comment this out. I just copied that. And I'm going to run this. So this is, I call this code COVID-19 web scraping project. So just so you see what actually happens when I do this is the following. Uh, I'm already in my folder. I'm I like to run things here from the terminal. And if I do that, uh, then I get, okay, there we go. It's done this and okay. It didn't give me any error message. It didn't show me anything either. So to be able to see what it has found, I will need to print this. Let's run this again. Okay, so it's found something here. And if you look at this, it says here, there are currently 158 confirmed cases, status, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so there we go. That is what I wanted to have here. Um, in fact, this is, I just noticed that uh, it doesn't seem to have updated. I'll change this to German because the information that we just got here was from the 5th. So that's yesterday, um, 8 o'clock. Let's see what I get if I run this, this German version. And you see this is actually today's information and here they have one more confirmed case. So you see there's this long text here. There's a lot of stuff that I I'm not interested in, I just want the bits of information and I now need to see how I can extract that. So the um, way how to com convert this bit of HTML code into text is with the so-called get text method. And if you do dot get underscore text, then it extracts the text from that. I'm setting this here to strip equals true. That means it removes any white space, any blanks, uh, new lines, etc. Um, that you might have in there. You might not need that. It depends a bit on the on what you're doing. You can try it without it and by setting it to strip equals true. So let's just uh, save this and run it again and see what I get now. And you see now it actually gives me uh, some neat text output. This is the last bit here that I just extracted. Still there's a lot more than I want and what I'm going to do now is apply a string method to actually split this text into individual words. So the word list that I'm going to create, well using the split method here, allows me to split uh, the string that I have here into a list of words. So I don't need the, to print this anymore. But what I want to see now is the word list. So if I do that and run that code, then I get a list here. And you see, I have if actuel is basically the position zero, index zero, one, two, three. So if I'm interested only in the number, then 159 index three is what I'm after. So if I said here, just index three and run this again, then now I get the 159 and that is what I want. So um, actually going back here, I want a little bit more. I want when, this information was given out. So if this is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
7 is what I'm interested in and 8 was the time. So I could say here plus word list of 7 and then the same thing again for 8. Now if I printed this then it's all sort of squashed together. That's not very useful. Um, I can put some spaces in there if I want to see it more neatly. So plus space and I can do the same thing here and if I run it again now then I do have the number here first followed by the date and then I have the time. You see that there's a comma. Uh, I don't like the comma so I can still remove that word list seven dot replace and that comma should be replaced. Let's see if that works. Um, it wants two arguments so it wants to replace the comma and then I need to say by what I want to replace it by nothing. So let's see how that looks now. Yes, and there we go, the comma has disappeared. There we go. If you wanted to, you could even replace the dots here with uh, forward slashes. You could uh, swap around the, the month and the, uh, the day, but uh, let's leave it there for the time being. So, the next thing is how to actually put this all into a CSV file. And to do that, I'm going to import CSV. You have this all in the book, Automate the Boring Stuff. Fantastic book uh, by Al Swigert. Uh, really recommend it. Uh, have a look at that. There's a chapter on CSV files and JSON and how to use those. We're not using JSON in this context here, so don't worry about that part. Import CSV and then I need to do the following. I need to actually create a file. So I'm going to um, copy this here and so I'm going to call it uh, COVID-19 uh, web scraping.csv and now you have different choices how you can actually write your um, information to the file and you can change the A which stands for append that means if you have an existing list you append the data if you use this for the very first time you can put that to W for write R would stand for read if you just want to read the file um, the new line and um, well nothing between these inverted commas means that you actually avoid um, an empty line between your different um, information that you write in each row of your comma separated values file. That's what CSV stands for. And the idea here is that you basically write into a file that you can read with any spreadsheet. Um, so this is actually quite cool and it's text only. It's a super simple file and therefore also quite small in size. Um, so enough said. This is the file that I'm going to write to and I'm going to open this file here. Even if that file doesn't exist yet, it will actually create this file. And then I need to use the writer method. So what I'm going to do um, is ucsv.writer and I'm going to write to the output file. So um, then I actually need to uh, first of all write to the write a row and I'm going to use this here. But before I do that, I need to uh, write first what I'm going to record. So I'm going to write here output writer dot write row. And then you put a list 
in there. So these square brackets. And um, the first thing is to actually give your different columns of your CSV file the headers. So in this case here, I'm going to start with a time or date and time recorded when this was when you did this then I'm going to say afterwards well I want to have the number um, so I'll call this a number of infected people then afterwards I'm going to record the date and the time and I want just a bit of context as well. So uh, the sentence basically in case they change something on their website or so I just want the, the, the whole sentence if they don't express it in the very same way then of course my program the way it's written now will go belly up uh, and that's not very useful. So once I've given the, the headers I then want to write what this um, date and time is and that's what you can do with date time dot now to be able to do that you need to import date time as date time and then this will allow me to do this here then word list um, my word list the first thing that I wanted was the number of infected people. So I need to change this to three. I'll follow the same format that I had here. Then I had next, if I look at my output again, I had the date um, and the date I want next. The date was number seven and the time was number eight. So three, then this should be 7 and this should be 8 and then I'll take the whole string this words equal um, that was this long string and I'll take the first 80 letters of that that is just to have the sentence in which this was put so basically this sentence here the first 80 letters of this and possibly the next uh, however far I get uh, with my 80 letters here. So let's have a look at um, how this works so far. I still need to close the file. So if I do this, then I need to still do this output file dot close. Let's run this and see what I get. not happy let's see okay I need to actually take date time there's no attribute now um, maybe I okay I need to say from daytime import otherwise I need to write um, daytime dot daytime dot now it works as well let's run it again okay so it seems to be happy this output here hasn't changed I didn't change anything on that um, if I want to see that uh, file now so I called it COVID something so COVID star I should have this so I called it COVID-19 scraping web scraping CSV so here there is my file and if I have a look at that I can open that um, well I could open it in here if you want to take a um, some editors so COVID 19 web scraping dot CSV and there you see it's actually recorded the, the daytime project object rather then 
This was when it was recorded, the number of people, then the date that was given on the website, the time, and then the context, this sentence here. Okay, I'll close this again. You can also just open it um, with any other text editor, of course. I can also open it here in Atom if I wanted to. So that's the first part of this project done. Now I want to actually have this running continuously. So I'm actually going to change this. Now that I've created this header row, I'm going to comment this out because I don't need this anymore. I'm going to change the way I'm going to write to the file to append and I'm going to create a function now that I will call here repeatedly. So I'll call this function def get data. So, and now all that's left to do is basically to call this function repeatedly. And that is what you can do with schedule. So uh, you have import schedule. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to take this part here. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying schedule in just to try it out. I'm going to say every minute I want to get the data, run this function. What I just did once, I want to run it every single minute. I put the function in here, get data. Okay. That is how this uh, schedule um, module works. If you have any questions on that, you can look. Um, on schedule PyPy. Here we go. And it's actually very nicely explained here how you do that. So it's super easy and uh, very simple to use really. So I put here how often I want to run this. While true, schedule, run pending, and then you put in a time sleep function. To be able to do that, I need to import the time module and I let it sleep for just 10 seconds for now. Uh, I'm going to save it and now I'm going to run it. Let's see what it's going to do. Oops, that was not running it. That was looking into the CSV file. There we go. It's um, not giving me an error message. That's always a good sign. And now I can have a look at what is happening here with my with the data. If you if I look at this web scraping, here is the file. This is what I'm interested in. And it should actually update. You see uh, 1653 was the last time this was updated. So if this runs now in a moment, if it writes to the file, then this should be, um, it should show that uh, the date modified would actually change. And I suppose this will happen just in a moment. We just need to be a bit patient. Okay, um, I'm not going to keep you waiting. Ah, there we go. Now it's actually done this. It's printed on here. Uh, as we asked it to uh, what the number of people were and it's done all of that here. Um, I'm doing the something similar actually in the background uh, that another program is running there. If I open this here you see uh, it had the first part here already recorded earlier and now at 58 minutes uh, it's appended the new data it hasn't written this again i didn't want it to i just wanted this to be appended followed by the number of people here the date as it said on the website and the time and then this context the first 80 characters of this sentence 
that followed. So uh, I can keep this running. Either you need to keep your computer running for this uh, to actually happen, or there are other web methods. You can look it up in Automate the Boring Stuff, uh, how to actually um, keep executing Python scripts uh, repeatedly. There are different ways of doing this. Um, so you can actually keep the computer running and do it that way, which can be a bit annoying, or there are other ways of uh, doing this. If you know that you have com your computer running uh, every morning then you, or every evening, then it's also a good idea to just run it then. So, and you see, as we were speaking, it has updated this and it has added after another minute the next um, information. And of course, that is unchanged. Uh, I don't expect this to change now, but uh, if I run this every 24 hours, then I can actually see how this develops. And then I could even plot a graph of this over time uh, using matplotlib, and that could be quite cool as well. So, hope you get an idea of what you can actually do. You can apply this to Amazon prices or um, if you uh, go for Notebooks, Billigo or whatever, one of these websites where you can buy gadgets, you can check what the price development is. You can even have an email sent to yourself uh, when the price is low enough and you want to get that bargain. Um, lots of different possibilities there. This is pretty cool. I hope this gives you a good idea of on how to put something together that will work. Have fun and get in touch if you have any questions.